diarrhea, fungi, protozoa, nematodes Building topsoil right under them toes The food web grows when we learn what not to do You gotta watch those toxic chemicals too When we use all that, you destroy the microbiome I team with nature, the earth is my home I crack your cabbage and I split your dome Get busy on this microphone like microbes in a root zone I'm doing it all the time, doing it what the... Sentient Soil Society, Northeast Illinois chapter. This is Mark speaking. How may I help you? Hey, buddy. John, what's going on, my brother? Good to hear from you, man. It's been a minute. How was that trip? Trip was good, thank you, appreciate it. That's awesome, dude. That sounds fantastic. You deserve it, buddy. What are you up to? Oh, I'm just chilling, man. I'm just chilling. This is my day off. Just kind of farting around here before I go run some errands. Nice. Well, hey, um, you remember last fall, I pulled out those soil reports and uh, we had the fun making that other little video. I actually did something at that same time and uh, I didn't share it with you because, you know, I kind of wanted to save some surprises, but I wanted to send it over to you. I wonder if you could take a look at, I did uh, a soil life test through Ward Laboratories and I thought you might get a kick out of it. Yeah, oh, definitely. I would love to see that, man. That's awesome. I'm so glad you did that, dude. Email it to me, email it to me and I'll, uh, I'll pull that up and check it out and then I'll see if I can get back to you and throw my two cents in there. Cool, yeah, I'll email it right now. It's on its way. Okay, I'll go check right now. Okay, talk to you soon. This'll be fun. Oh yeah, buddy. That's awesome. All right, let's give Mr. Perry a call back here. I hope he's not involved in some heavy-duty disc golf tournament. Okay, so before Mark comes back on here and starts talking about everything he's going to talk about, because you know he's going to talk about a lot of really, really fun and intense stuff, and you're going to sit there and probably have your head spin, I just wanted to give a little preface on this. So last fall, I did my soil test. If you guys remember, there's a link to the video. You can take a look at it right there. Um, but, you know, I was just doing uh, some you know, kind of getting a good idea of what had happened over the course of X amount of years and me doing what I've been doing out there. Well, as part of that, I also sent off uh, soil to Ward where I did my soil test and uh, had a biology test done as well. And now I didn't go super in depth. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. There's a ton of different options. It just depends on how much money you want to spend. Uh, but the general idea was just to get an idea of where soil life is. And now we're just going to kind of give like um, a 30,000 foot view here on, on the way this looks. Now, a lot of the time you're gonna find a ratio of fungi to bacteria of somewhere uh, one to 2.3. Yeah, you'll find that if you look up some soil life uh, information. And generally, generally speaking, lawns are gonna be a little more bacterially dominated because there's not a ton of uh, good composting material that's going down in general lawn care. So. Oftentimes in that litter or in that layer of organic matter, that's really where you're going to find uh, more of the uh, sort of fungal life because it can kind of propagate inside uh, this sort of digestive zone in a way. So obviously with, you know, like higher salt fertilizers or fungicides, things like that, that's going to knock back some uh, fungal growth. Now, in looking at my test, you can see here that for the most part, uh, I'm running above normal or in a good sort of healthy soil system on, on the lawn. Now, I don't really have anything else to compare that to um, as far as native soil or anything like that. This was just an area that I wanted to have done because I've never actually done one of these tests before. And, you know, figure 
Uh, no manures were ever applied, uh, no compost whatsoever, just recycling clippings and using my typical low nutrient input program is what yielded, you know, just a good healthy soil system that's running above average by comparison to what would be, I guess, healthy farm soil. So this is something you can do. It's something that you can get into if you really want to. It's just, you know, an additional rabbit hole to go down uh, and start looking because, you know, sometimes people want to know this stuff. John, what's going on? It's Mark, man. Just giving you a little buzz back. Hey, Mark. I'm down to wax poetic on it a little bit. I got to run a few errands, but well, the first thing that I kind of see that I notice when I'm looking at that report is the bacteria to fungal biomass ratio. It's pretty spot on for lawns, man. I mean, a lawn is typically bacterially dominated. Bacteria are kind of the first ones to the party. Along with fungi, they sort of form the base of that soil food web. The primary decomposers of that above ground biomass, hey, cycling nutrients to the plant, building that beautiful soil structure. They're actually fixing nitrogen uh -huh. as well. There are several genera of uh, bacteria that are taking atmospheric yep. nitrogen and converting it into a plant available form of nitrogen, nitrates or ammonium, depending on what your pH is. You've got azotobacter, azospirulum. Uh, they're free living bacteria. That means that they don't have to have a symbiotic relationship with legumes. They're a part of that nitrogen cycle but that's not to say that you don't have some good fungi down here either those numbers look pretty good too so you know you're getting all the benefits of fungi not only the mycorrhizal fungi that are co-mingling with your roots and getting getting all of those nutrients deep from within that profile to the plant but uh, you know fungi also unlock phosphorus in our soils and that's just the tip of the iceberg man when we have that full soil food web going on in our soil I'm talking about the uh, the protozoa the nematodes micro macro arthropods springtails spiders pill bugs ants everything they all play a part in this thing when we've got that full robust and diverse soil food web you've got natural nutrient cycling taking place right inside that root zone you also have natural disease suppression when you've got a legion of beneficial microbes in your soil right around those roots then there's no ability for those bad guys to take a hold in terms of that soil structure it's the bacteria and fungi who are directly responsible for that um, starting with that bacteria, you know, they produce a super sticky slime on their bodies. So when they're colonizing on all of those mineral particles, moving about and collecting all of that organic material, they're sort of pulling it all together and binding it into micro aggregates. And then the fungi come in and they also produce a super sticky glue-like substance on their bodies called glomalin. More specifically, it's the fungal hyphae very long strand like organisms that are kind of moving through that soil and pulling all of those little micro aggregates into macro aggregates that allows for that air that beautiful life-giving air as well as water to uh, penetrate and infiltrate that profile hold on a minute dude the rhizosphere that space that's right outside of a plant's root system is one of the most densely populated life rich zones on planet earth hold on a second dude i'm about to go buy some archie comics when we embrace that soil food web as gardeners that is when we start to achieve a true understanding of the soil as a functioning system and you know for my money man one of the most amazing things involving soil biology is what's called the liquid carbon pathway through photosynthesis that plant is taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere it's taking water from the soil and it is taking that beautiful sunlight energy and it's transforming all of that into biochemical energy in which it's translocating to its roots and releasing it into the soil to feed those microbes. The plant is actually pushing those photosynthetic compounds into the soil and all of those microbes are resynthesizing it into a more stable humic polymer. That's actually an anabolic process that's building that material up. It's not like the, the decomposition of organic matter. That's carbon sequestration. All of those beneficial microorganisms are actually pulling all of the material it needs out of the soil and feeding the plant in return for those root exudates. Those microorganisms are just looking for food, just like I'm looking for food. What's up, Mark? How much is it, man? Uh, looking at 26.54, Mark. All right. I'm about to eat some tacos, John. 
And that's really what it comes down to, right? The common denominator of that soil food web is that everybody's just kind of looking for food. Whether it's inputs on our end, you know, where we're putting humic acid in our soil that the fungi love, product that contains molasses that the bacteria love, organic sources of nitrogen such as a soybean meal, alfalfa meal, feather meal, sea kelp, that's actually enhancing those photosynthetic capabilities of the plant that is gonna support that liquid carbon pathway, right? We do all of these things to kind of team with nature and, and support the natural processes. Um, once we start using those synthetic inorganic fertilizers and those toxic chemicals that distorts this whole thing, takes the whole thing out of whack, and then we end up spending more time and more money as operators, right? We save time and money when we team with nature. Um, but anyways, man, I'm going to get going. Thanks for this conversation. I appreciate it. You know, I'm always down to wax poetic on soil biology. What? Oh, you're done. As always, I appreciate it. Mainly your enthusiasm. I think that's really the best part about all of it. <laughs> all right, buddy. Absolutely. Seriously, man. Always a pleasure. Thanks, man. All right. Bye-bye. Whoa. All right. Well, I just want to thank Mark Paulson. Man, the dude... <laughs> He's just hilarious to talk to. He's so smart. He gets so excited about all this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I continue to urge him to kind of get back in and start talking about these holistic methods that he really is into. So here's what you can do. If you want to do this, Ward Laboratories does offer this service. You can go to their website. You can send in soil. It does take a little while. It actually took mine about like three or four weeks. May, it might have even been five weeks when it was done because it gets a little backed up. A lot more people are getting interested to see how much soil life they really have down there. And one thing that I will be doing this year is actually uh, taking some tests, uh, say before and after fungicides are applied and before and after fertilizers are applied. And we're gonna see if we can see a difference in the range on the soil and uh, start to get an idea of what impacts there are on soil life with some of the practices that we do. So. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys had fun with this. I sure had fun making it. I know Mark was uh, always, well, you know, he always has fun. And uh, I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.